Good afternoon, everyone, and you're all very welcome to the latest webinar brought to you by the HSC staff health and well-being team. Get active for your well-being, and we're delighted to have Dervla Rourke as our special guest today. Before I hand you over to your host, a little bit of housekeeping, you're in Zoom webinar format, so the chat will be disabled, uh, but the Q&A is open. So please, please, please throughout ask questions. If you have questions for Dervil and the rest of the team, please use the Q&A and we will leave time at the end uh, for to address some of those questions live. We also have Michael Feeney join us today as a sign language interpreter. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to your host, Sarah McCormack. Thank you very much, uh, Leo. Hello, uh, Anna Jeev uh, Galair. Uh, I extend a very warm welcome to all of you who have joined us this afternoon. My name is Sarah McCormack and I'm the HSC Lead for Healthy Ireland and I'm also the HSC National Lead for Staff Health and Wellbeing. Uh, I thank you all for coming and joining us for this webinar and I can see that we have a wonderful audience with uh, over 2,500 registered, taking a great interest in getting active for our wellbeing. As we come here and join for this webinar, I'm very conscious that we are still living with COVID. COVID has not gone away. We're learning to live and cope uh, with it. And it's important that we continue to look after ourselves, to take that self-care and indeed to help and to support others. Uh, we also know that as we actually move out of uh, COVID, that we do need to continue to help and support each other. And it is in that context that we in the HSC Health and Wellbeing are continuing to develop uh, supports and different supports to help all of you in the public out there to improve your health and wellbeing. And today we are joining and continuing on that journey. And as you know, we are coming here to talk about being active and the link of activity with your health and wellbeing. And today is an important day because it is a new adventure for us coming here from the HSC because we are launching online exercise programs. And these online exercise programs will be available to all of the public. And I must say it was our own staff in the HSC that actually gave us the idea of developing the online programs. Because you know, we are the biggest employer in the country. So we provide a service 265 days a year. And because of that, our staff are actually working different shifts and different patterns. So they wanted to see about how could they increase their activity in their working day life. And we were challenged with that because we had to think about how do we be fair to everybody? How do we help the people that are on shift work? So with online exercises, this provides the opportunity to our staff and to you, the public, that you can avail of these exercises at any time or in any setting, and you can ensure that you're helping to get your activity into your everyday life. So the online exercise programs that we are launching here, it's a suite of uh, programs, and they include Pilates, yoga, strength and conditioning, and yoga chair exercises. And after today, the yoga, or sorry, the Pilates, the Pilates, uh, a suite of eight programs will be available straight away for you to dig into to uh, start your exercise uh, in your daily lives. And to launch uh, our online uh, program of exercises, it is indeed a privilege for me to be joined uh, with Derbal O'Rourke here, who has come to uh, launch our program of exercise with us. So, you know, Derbal, and Derbal, you're very welcome. But Derville needs little or no introduction for myself. Derville, you are so well known. Uh, you are a former Irish professional athlete and you competed there uh, for 14 years across, which included three Olympic uh, Games. And Derville, of course, you became a world champion by, willing, wi by winning the world indoor there in 2006. And then Derville, when the day came that you decided to uh, hang up your running uh, spikes, you didn't sit back. And you have actually published two award-winning uh, cookbooks. And then in 2018, you came along and you actually uh, launched there your healthy lifestyle platform, Derval.ie. And Derval, you tell me that that platform has grown from strength to strength and that now there are over 9,000 members in that platform who are all working together and uh, supporting each other to achieve their healthy goals. And then, Derval, you also have your uh, health and well wellness uh, shop there at uh, shop.derval.ie. And sure then, sure, I'd have to mention Ireland's fittest family. 
you know, don't you actually show all the great motivation, the grit and the determination. And then you come along and I have to say then, as a woman and even as a coach, you actually have actually uh, put history in place because you're the one that actually secured four out of the four families a place in the quarter final. So we can actually see that you are an achiever. And with all of that, you still have time for your husband, Peter, and your two lovely children there, Daphne and Archie. So Derval, I know and from uh, looking at all that you're doing, you certainly can see a huge benefit of linking in their activity and exercise uh, with uh, wellness and with health. So Derval, it's our privilege in the HSC that you have given us some time in that very, very busy schedule to come along and join us uh, in the program. And I know our audience would be absolutely delighted to, uh, to hear from you. And you're, you're very welcome, Derval. And I suppose I was just thinking there in all the great achievements, but I just reflected back and thought, go oh, Derval, let's go back in the beginning here. How did you actually come to be? You were born like a little baby, like all of us, you know, and just maybe just tell us a little bit about yourself and your coming to be as to in, in the growing up uh, to be involved in exercise. Well, Sarah, I have to say, that's an amazing introduction. I wish you could introduce me into rooms all the time. It's fantastic. I think I need to record it and just play it to myself if I'm having a bad day, if I'm feeling overwhelmed by my life, because I'm very similar to everybody else in that I'm very busy. I've got a lot going on and I'm trying to juggle all the balls and inevitably some of them fall. Um, so it was a lovely intro, but I, I do understand how hard it can be for all of us in our day-to-day -day lives to be to be healthy but I'll go back so I guess um, like a lot of people possibly watching on here today I grew up in an estate with loads and loads of kids um, in Cork where I am now and every day in my estate it was all about being out running around there was a green in front of my house it was like tip the can all these games and it was a very active childhood just in a very natural way because we were all playing with each other and then you know my my dad was a big fan of sport and I think he always saw the benefits of sport. So I was in different activities from when I was quite young and, you know, I did athletics, I did gymnastics, I did hockey, I did bits of everything. So for me, for my parents and I guess for my kind of for my childhood years, it was never about having a child that was going to go to the Olympic Games. Like, honestly, that was never on their radar. They were never those parents. It was like, we want our kids to move and be active so they'll sleep better at night probably and so they'll you know concentrate more in school so my parents were just very into physical activity and I was lucky in that I was in brilliant clubs I had brilliant teachers and they just always encouraged me in sport and I just I, like I can't like a lot of people here might have seen me on Fittest Family I'm hugely competitive if like if I'm crossing a road I want to cross a road first type of thing I'm ridiculous I'm competitive with my own shadow. So I always had that from being a kid, but then I just loved the outlet of sport. But I have to say, like, as I've gotten older and gone through the different phases, you know, being a teenage girl, for example, in sport, like I definitely had to navigate my way through that. Remember, you know, why I loved it. And I think that I would look back and say, I probably had to work hard to stay in sport as a teenage girl. And then I went to college and for me, I was really fortunate because my job was being a professional athlete for 14 years. So essentially athletics opened up the world to me. It was like my passport to the world. And so, but it's funny because my job was being healthy and well. So like when I was an athlete, you were constantly looking at your different pillars of health and wellness. So you were looking and saying, okay, what's your physical movement? Like what training are you doing to ultimately perform? What is your nutrition like? How are you nourishing yourself? What is your sleep and recovery like? And then you're kind of, what's your mental resilience like? Like, what are you, what are your challenges? What are you dealing with? What are your tools to deal with that? What are your support structures? Um, so there's, there was just a lot going on to make me feel well, to run well. Um, and it's funny now because I'm completely out the other side trying to incorporate that into my day-to-day -day life. But I have to say that love of movement, I can almost trace it back to the moment I was a kid out my green, running across the green as fast as I could, trying to beat the boys. A lot of the time I was beating them, thankfully. And um, just the joy of it. And I think it's interesting because the question you started with is about childhood. Sometimes we, I think we forget about joy 
and we, we kind of feel like we need to work out to punish ourselves but I actually think you need to exercise to feel good to feel well to add to your life like I'm all about adding in elements that will make me feel good as opposed to trying to make myself feel bad life is too short to feel bad well, Darvel, that's definitely given us an insight into, into your life there. Uh, and I suppose, Darvel, when, um, when we just look back there and hear all of the stages there across in relation to, um, to your life, and you talk about being out there on the green and running and ahead of the boys and all the rest from there. Um, but how do you actually, you know, like I was talking there in the beginning about the importance of, you know, looking after ourselves at all stages of our life and that piece, you know, of self-care, right? So all during that piece, and particularly, you know, you had the tough time there being in the Olympics, how do you take care uh, of yourself from that healthy lifestyle perspective that you're so bought into? Yeah, it's interesting. I think taking care of yourself as an Olympic athlete versus taking care of yourself as a busy working mom are two entirely different things. And that was one of my major realizations when I retired from track and field. So I had spent, as I said, 14 years essentially trying to get to championships and win medals. And it was all about me feeling well to perform well. And then all of a sudden I retired and it kind of didn't matter anymore to anybody if I was, if I was healthy and well. And I had to figure that out for myself. So I had to sort of find within myself, like what do I do for self-care? Because and I think this was an important, an important thing for me where I realized nobody was going to walk into my living room and tell me to mind myself. So the kids weren't going to tell me to go out for a jog or to do, you know, we're launching here today, the Pilates and yoga, which I have to say, I think is an amazing tool to have for people. But my kids are never going to tell me to go off there and do 20 minutes of, of yoga or Pilates. So um, I think when it comes to self-care, I think there has to be a personal responsibility because no, I just don't think like as an employer, obviously the HSC, you guys are giving people this tool, but you still as a person have to sit down and go, where am I going to make 20 minutes? Where am I going to make 30 minutes? And for me, I think the biggest word I associate with self-care would be time because it's what time are you carving out to mind yourself? Um, because time is the biggest thing that I've struggled with in recent years you know that I've all the time I put into work all the time I put into family um then time for friends time for everything else so where are you getting that self-care time and I think you need to take that time you need to ring fence it and go the more I mind myself in a day-to-day -day capacity the better I am for myself first and foremost because you're with yourself your whole life you're born with yourself you'll die with yourself you're with yourself you have this big lifelong journey and I think really considering how you mind yourself within it is really important. Um, a simple thing I guess I do day to day is I say, right, what am I doing today to mind myself? Like it's that simple. And I may, I do make myself ask myself that question and like, I will go back to it. Like it has to be accessible. It has to be simple. Don't do things that make your life harder. Life is hard enough for us all as it is, particularly in the past year. And I think that's why something like, and online, you know, I wrote down there when you were chatting on demand and that's what, you know, that's what you're doing with, with these courses, like it's on demand and people are working different hours. So, okay, where do you find the time then to sit down and do that? If that kind of answers your question, Sarah? Yeah, and I suppose, um, Durable, I'm thinking there that uh, the, the great link between uh, physical activity uh, and wellness and well-being. And uh, quite recently there, the last year or so, uh, the Royal College of Physicians uh, published a great report there that actually called physical activity, you know, the wonder drug. And it actually said that if we really actually understood the benefits that physical activity brings into our life, that we would ensure that that would be uh, incorporated every day in our lives. But I suppose, Darbel, sometimes uh, maybe we say the older we get, the wiser we get uh, in that, is that as you grew up and you see there, you see that huge link there with health and well-being. But like, how, how do you feel that feeling of that you recognize uh, physical activity is actually doing some good for, good for my being? Um, you know, what, what are you getting from that? Yeah, that's really interesting. I, because I've gone to such a different phase in my life and, you know, I'm going to be 40 in a couple of weeks, so which I feel like is a big milestone. And I know for me, if, if I move for anywhere from a few minutes to kind of 30, 40 minutes, straight away, it's almost like I have a little bit of a weight that starts to lift. I feel physically lighter. I think 
my brain is more relaxed. Um, I find that I can handle things better. Like, you know, I would have a lot of going on at work. I'm very busy and I find my decision-making process is much better if I give my, like, carve myself out that time. And the way I do it, and I know this is easier for me because I work for myself is I put the 30 minute, 30 to 40 minute slots into my diary for physical activity. Like I write them in and I will say to um, the people I work with, I'm like, oh, I have a meeting at that time. Like I'm not available. Um, and I will often say, you know, if I'm doing it at home in the evenings, like I will say to my husband, like, oh, I can't do that at that time because I'm, I'm not available. So I, I know I need to, like, I recognize that in myself because I have that physical feeling of just feeling a bit lighter, feeling a little bit happier, um, just feeling a bit more able to cope with life in general once I'm moving. Um, and as well, I just think from a from a getting older perspective, like I, I kind of joke, so I used to have this big lofty goal of being the best in the world. And it was big and it was lofty. And you know what? I did achieve it one day and that was fabulous. But now, my goal is just as lofty. I'm like, I want to be able to walk down a beach in West Cork when I'm in my, I used to say 80s, in my 90s. I want to walk, be able to stroll, not at a fast pace, but feel physically, I want to age really, really well and feel good. Um, and I think that's important. I think we all spend so much money and time on stuff, money and time on clothes, money and time on doing lots of things. Like that 30 minutes a day, the other thing I would say about it, and I think about it like this all the time as well is, it's like a health pension. So all of us think about financially what we're gonna do as we start to get older. Physically, where like what are you putting in now that is gonna be in the bank that you can look back and go, okay, I know I banked this amount of time. Um, and that's the way I look at it. I make it really practical where I just make it part of my day-to-day -day life where I'm like, this has to go in. But I will say this, it is not easy. There's every reason for me not to be active every day. There's the kids, there's always something to do, there's something going on, you know, there's emails to answer, there's somebody else needs me. And I think I have had to get very tough with myself and saying no terrible like you're not good enough for everyone else if you're not moving if you're not minding yourself if you're not eating well um and that's I think that's not an easy thing for people I think and I think we don't talk about it enough I think you know I'm obviously the mom in my family and I see how naturally things just fall to me I see how naturally I end up being in all the WhatsApp groups being you know being the point or the organizer you know like the family PA but um I'm pretty useless at all of that if I'm not feeling well in myself and I take that time and I I say it to people in my life a lot you know like I say I would say to my husband like he could come home from work and I will just say like I need I need 30 minutes or I'm going to lose it and, and you know I need that to just lift me and to feel good mentally and then the physical feeling good physically from it as well. And Darrell, well, I'm really just picking up there, as you're actually just saying, of putting yourself first, you know, and that reminds me that there in the HSE and quite recently, we actually launched there a suite of minding your well-being uh, videos and just reminding our audience out there that we have a lovely suite of videos out there, which is all covering that piece in relation to the self-care, looking after your thoughts, looking after your emotions um, uh, and really looking after yourself. So I can see that when you're in there, that you're clever enough and actually saying, uh, I need to actually either take my downtime or where I'm going to going to go so I suppose I'm conscious of the fact that there are uh, many families that are out there tuned into uh, into us today uh, in relation to um, to uh, what we're doing and I suppose what tips might you actually give maybe to families about actually getting that uh, that connection in place do you know what's a really simple tip? And it's something that I will not say I'm a genius. I absolutely stumbled across it. So, we, you know, you mentioned I have an online community. There's so many of us in it and they're like all of us in that they're busy. Lots of them have families. And I kept getting sent pictures by women in my online community of them doing my sessions, my training sessions with their kids. And I was like, God, that's interesting because I was not doing that um, at all because uh, I was carving out that time kind of for myself, for my headspace. So I do a bit of a hybrid now. So like we have a live yoga session on tonight at eight o'clock. And one of the things I do with my husband every week is I'm like, OK, that's what we do now together. We do yoga at eight o'clock together. And no joke, we go into it at five to eight. It's after the bedtime rush where like the whole house is stressed and you can feel that stress where, you know, you're barely talking to each other. Then we starting the yoga for 40 minutes and we kind of come out of it and all of a sudden we look at each other you're not that bad you know we get on fine um so i try and incorporate that say that with 
if there's somebody in your house or someone you can you can do those sessions with because obviously you guys have those sessions and they're amazing they're a brilliant resource um get someone to do it with you my daughter has done the yoga with me she's five and a half going on six um so i think that's a good thing and the other tip i would have is consider your day-to-day -day life so you know activities are slowly starting to come back for kids um if you're dropping your kids to a pitch i rang my one of my old coaches she's not old but she was my former coach yesterday and she had just dropped one of her kids to an activity and she was just walking she was just walking getting her steps in and she's like i'm gonna be out of breath because i want these to be good steps and getting my fast steps in so you keep talking and we we're chatting away so it's about in your day-to-day -day, like what are what are your pressure points in your day-to-day -day of where you need to be where you need to put your time but where then can you carve out your bits of time and is there a way of integrating your need to move and to feel well with your family's needs and everything else everybody else has got going on so i would often like just take a step back and look at the whole week and i go okay this is happening on this day this is happening on this day where do i fit in in all of this and how do i integrate it all um and i do things like that i, I try and make it fun i've drawn in chalk i've drawn out tracks in my driveway um and the kids just run around and my two just run around there so i try and make it fun but i also try and include myself in moving and don't just think about are the kids moving like are you moving as well because that's really important oh sorry i think you're on mute oh, yeah you're sorry on. you're thanks to adorable you're right i can see that, that you're actually building it in there as part of your of your everyday life and i suppose one thing uh, i noticed that you mentioned to me when you were talking there earlier on about is that you don't actually run anymore so well i think that that's what you were saying to me and anyway, i hope i'm not misquoting you but i suppose is that do we actually need to look at our different maybe forms of activity maybe as we grow older you know whatever else is there in our younger for the teenagers the children you know what what tips or ideas might you have around all of that yeah i think that's interesting so i i used to run on a good day would say for 12 seconds very fast um over hurdles and when i retired i found that that type of running that sprinting wasn't something that made a lot of sense in my life as I started to get older. Um, did a little bit of couch to 5K, didn't love it. So what I do is I would do, I do a tiny bit of running. Like there'll be weeks and months that go by that I mightn't run at all. I'm doing a little bit of running at the moment because we're doing a five week challenge on my site. Um, and I've put a running element in because I had never done it with the members of my community. Like we've been going for two and a half years and I had never introduced running. So I said, right ladies, we're gonna run. Um, but like, it's not, like this week our session is, is six by three minutes on with one minute recovery and we've built up to that over four weeks but I would say a really really big thing is be really open-minded to what you're doing and don't think that like I used to hate yoga it wasn't for me I found my brain was too busy I, I didn't I just didn't enjoy it and then recently I've started doing yoga and as I said we do it every Wednesday night at eight o'clock and I love it I wouldn't be without it now so I think always approach things with an open mind we've a brilliant um coach in durable.ie and she said a she said something recently to the community and it totally landed with me she said um meet yourself where you are at so where are you at now and meet yourself in that place and see what you can do in your life and what you can add in in your day-to-day -day life to feel well and i just thought that was very powerful because sometimes we, we think back to you know our 20 year old self you know oh I, when i was 20 i was able to do this and i felt like this but actually where are you at now and be honest with yourself and what can you do so um you know i think i think being open to doing new things being open to trying new things carving out those bits of time um is is really really important yeah so no i did i did confess that to you sarah that i wasn't doing and you were so surprised that i wasn't doing a lot of running but i am as i said i'm in a five week running block at the moment um and but then i mightn't do it again for two months Okay, and uh, Durable, I'm going to share with you and to our audience here um, some promo videos that we just have of our Pilates because we're launching our Pilates uh, first uh, in here okay. and think that this can be something for everybody. So let's here have a look at uh, our promo videos for the Pilates. Hi, my name is Goretti and I have been working with HSC Health and Wellbeing to make some simple to follow Pilates exercise videos. You can click on the link above to access the free Pilates for Beginners videos.
We will progress through eight 30 minute videos that will build your strength and flexibility no matter what your age or experience. I would encourage you to move through the eight Pilates sessions at a pace that suits you. And as you progress through the sessions, you will feel yourself increase in strength and ability. So best of luck. Hi, my name is Goretti and today I'm going to talk to you about the benefits of Pilates. So why Pilates? It has lots of benefits, including increasing muscle tone, building muscle and improving your posture. To truly get the benefits from Pilates, it's important that you're consistent with your practice. So try and schedule your practice into your diary every week and keep coming back at the same time. So I would encourage you to grab your mat and your bottle of water and join us in helping you to maintain your physical well-being. So Durval, I think there, uh, that's Gretia, our instructor for the Pilates, and that's the Pilates that is going to be launched straight away after uh, our launch here today. And it's the beginners that we're starting with their 30 uh, minute uh, sessions that's in it. And as you were saying there earlier, you know, if you think you don't like it, definitely uh, give it a try, get it, keep it, uh, keep it going, uh, no matter what, give it a try uh, and, and make it happen. And uh, Durval, I was just thinking there, we have a wonderful audience, you know, 2,500, over 2,500 registered uh, here today. So wouldn't it be a, a pity for us to let that audience go past? We just see how did they, how did they feel maybe about their exercise? So Durval and I were just talking about uh, maybe what, what might be interesting to us and what we might look at. So we're going to uh, reach out to you now, our audience, we're going to put up here a poll question. And the question that we decided that we're interested in really hearing back from you is that, is it a challenge for you to achieve 30 minutes of physical activity in your working days? So just rolling there that uh, poll for you and giving you a few minutes there to uh, think about your exercise and how it is actually fitting in. So we will let the poll go ahead, you vote it, and we will let the, uh, the people in the background room uh, take the results from the poll and we will come back to it uh, later on and we will have a look at that. And I suppose it's definitely insane is that uh, the National Physical Activity Plan was launched there by government some uh, time ago and actually identified and the evidence is there in saying that by taking in 30 minutes of physical activity, activity into our daily lives, the huge significant benefit that is there for us to achieve from our well-being and our wellness. So with that, it is um, my pleasure to, um, to introduce and to welcome in Sarah O'Brien from, uh, from the HSE. Uh, so uh, I wel welcome uh, Sarah O'Brien and Sarah O'Brien uh, is our national uh, lead for physical activity and healthy eating in the HSE. Uh, Sarah, are you with us? I'm just trying to see, is Sarah coming in? As you know, and I should have said, this is the wonderful uh, piece of the virtual uh, world because uh, Derville is down there in Cork and I'm up here in, uh, in Mullingar. And now we have called in Sarah O'Brien from uh, Waterford. Sarah, delighted uh, to have you. As I said, Sarah is our uh, national lead in HSC Health and Wellbeing for physical activity uh, and, um, and healthy eating. Uh, Sarah, I know that you have some words of wisdom to share with Hi, us. Hi, Sarah. Today. Well, thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here this afternoon as we put a focus um, on uh, supporting people to, to get active for wellbeing at work. I'm just going to um, share a screen here. I just have a few uh, slides to help keep me focused. Um, sorry, now just a few technical. Bits. Okay, great. Um, so as Sarah McCormack has mentioned there in her introduction, I lead the Healthy Eating Active Living Program in the HSE. And our job is to mobilize the health service uh, by increasing levels of physical activity and healthier weight across our service users, our staff and the population as a whole. So over the next few minutes, I just want to share with you some 
lots of information, I suppose, on, on why I think it's really important that we put a focus, a strong focus on promoting physical activity across the, the health services and across our work workplaces. The, the HSE is um, the, the largest employer in the state. We have over 100, 100 and 10,000 staff um, employed directly in the HSE and our funded agencies uh, across 2,500 workplaces. So we have a great opportunity to, to connect with and to support um, people to, to be active. As Sarah mentioned earlier, also Royal College of Physicians in Ireland have uh, coined the phrase of, of, have called physical activity a wonder because of of uh, how positive, uh, how, how, how much of a positive impact it can have on our health and well-being, both of uh, our physical well-being, disease, improve food, as well as helping those of us who have chronic disease to, to live well with it. So how much of this wonder drug do we need to take every day? Last year, the World Health Organization published um, updated guidelines on uh, physical activity and sedentary behavior, and they've just on the focus on their recommendations for those of us aged 18 to 64. Um, I take it that the majority of the audience here fall within that, uh, that category. Um, they recommend that uh, we should uh, be aiming to achieve at least 150 to 300 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic physical activity a week or 75 to 150 minutes of, of vigorous intensity. We are earning equivalent comps depending on, on, on what you want to find in, in your week. Um, moderate in the, uh, the, the handy tip I always try to remember when I'm out getting my walk in the morning um, I need to uh, increase my heart rate increase my breathing and still be able to to keep a conversation at moderate intensity and doing some benefit rather than than strolling along um, and if I want to up the ante a little bit I, 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 increase the pace to a level where where I can't comfortably keep, keep a conversation going um, so the and for those of us um, who are not very active uh, at all or who find it difficult to, to be active um, for very, the, the World Health Organization would say uh, some movement is better than none. So, so do what you can. Um, and starting slowly, I suppose, is, is the key there. Um, aim to achieve maybe a 10 minute walk in, in the first week um, and, and bit gradually week by week, adding an extra five to 10 minutes as you, as you come and it's amazing how quickly you will get there. They also recommend um, that we should be including muscle strengthening activities on two or more days in the week. And uh, the free video exercises that uh, are going to be available from today, the, the Pilates and uh, later in, in June, probably the, the strength and conditioning ones um, are a great way to help you uh, achieve that. Uh, and I think it, what's interesting here as well in line is that uh, they're also they're very much focused not just on on structured physical activity or, or doing um doing an exercise program or that they're also reminding us how important it is to limit the amount of time we spend in sedentary behavior the healthy ireland the last healthy ireland survey um in 2019 that looked at physical activity and sedentary behavior would have identified that most of us were spending at least eight hours um, sedentary during the day. And for those of us who uh, were, have dead occupations, that, uh, that figure is probably quite a lot higher. Um, the sedentary behavior, which is, is where you're not really moving uh, around at all, is uh, interlinked with an increased risk of um, ill health and chronic disease. And uh, we know that really to offer set 
that sedentary time, we need to very much increase the uh, amount of physical activity we do. So they are very much encouraging us to, to limit our sedentary time, to break it up by uh, replacing it with more physical activity of any intensity, even light intensity physical activity is, is of benefit here. And that's kind of just getting up and getting up from your chair and moving about um, in the evening. Uh, if you're watching TV, making sure you, you get up on the ad break and, and walk around, move move to another room in the house or or at leave your desk to go to the photocopier or have a conversation with with a colleague all of those uh, pieces make a uh, make a difference so we know for many of us or for all of us uh, the past year has been very challenging uh, in in many different ways um for people who have been reg would have been regularly active, the closure of sports facilities and the suspension of team-based sports would have had a huge impact. However, um, there is good news. Uh, and what we we're seeing from, from the reads conducted by Sport Ireland um, over the, the period uh, April 2019 to, to April 2020 is that more and more people are now uh, physically active than were before the COVID restrictions. Uh, and in particular, we're seeing a substantial increase in the number of people who are walking for recreation, which is probably not surprising given that it's a, one, of, one of the things we're regularly told that we can, we can do the, the COVID restrictions. Um, I live by the sea. And uh, I have to say, I can anecdotally attest to the fact that uh, an awful lot of people are also swimming in the sea, um, irrespective of, of the month or, or the weather and, and using that to, to stay active and to um, help their, their well-being. There are, I'm sure, multiple factors that have contributed to this, not least the reduction in the other activities that are competing for our time and attention. And I think the, the big task for us as we move back to real life and as society starts to reopen now is how we can maintain that uh, positive trend um, and a silver lining of, of the COVID cloud. So when it comes to, to our workplaces, there are some things I think that we can, we can do and look at. Uh, some of you will be familiar with these. There are a number of national, these are a number of national initiatives that are available to all workplaces, irrespective of the size or, or the type of business. Um, the cycle to work scheme, which facilitates uh, employees to access um, cycling equipment at, at a reduced cost. Uh, by uh, purchasing through the employer's payroll um, and your, your tax against the cost of your, which is always a great incentive to, to reduce the amount of tax you have to pay um, and get some benefit. The Smarter Travel Workplaces Initiative is run by the National Transport Agency um, and workplaces can participate in this at any level, uh, either through um, the regular walking and cycling challenges that happen throughout the year or by taking it a step forward, further, becoming a partner, signing a charter and uh, undertaking much larger uh, projects and initiatives to improve um, physical activity and active travel within the workplace. Um, and uh, our partners, are, the Irish Heart Foundation, have adapted their Selena Slaunta um, programme to uh, a SLE at work, um, where within the workplace or, or the, the, the grounds outside or even inside in, in the lar in larger buildings, there can be way marked routes um, that encourage people to, to walk. And I know there are a number of the larger HSE um, buildings around the country that have the indoor sleaze and the staff find them particularly uh, helpful, uh, especially those who are on shift work, working nights or that. And then again, there are also programmes like the HSE uh, Annual Steps to Health Initiative, which is now in its fourth year and has grown from strength to strength. Um, every year, the stories and the feedback we get from the participants and the coordinators, um, I have to say, are inspiring. So this year, uh, we decided to capture some of that inspiration on video, and I'm delighted to share it with you today. So, um, Leo, can you start the steps video, please? Good thing, Sarah. I've been doing Steps to Health since it started, 
So at this stage, I'm a veteran. We had a group of 10 people. We called it Stamping Out Disease. The team name ended up being 999 Steps. We decided to name the team Scooby-Doo because I work in Skibu. During the pandemic, it, it has been very difficult to and, you know, maintain the connections between the team members. But when you kind of have family life and then you have these 12-hour shifts, it's very hard to actually fit time just for yourself in. So by doing the steps of health, we were getting out walking, we were giving ourselves time. My manager saw the meal and was like, what do you think of these? And we have this program coming up, anyone interested? And boom, that was it. The ladies started showing up, we're interested in this, we're going to do it and all that. The usual workplace banter was going on. So people were pushing themselves to uh, get out there more. Found the initiative motivating and encouraging to, to get me walking again. The most enjoyable part of the challenge was we get to know people that we wouldn't normally get to know. Initially, it was like walk for me, but later on, it became fun. I'm getting cancer treatment. So Steps to Health for me is actually quite important for my mobility. So some days I do more and some days I do less. It helped my health actually, that's the truth. Really brought together people in the workplace because one was boosting the other along and the crack, the camaraderie that was involved in it. Even at the end of the Step to Health challenge, they decided we're not, we're not stopping. So we went an extra four weeks again. I suppose this year in particular, people can't get out in their groups, screenshots yourselves, get into little WhatsApp groups, support each other along the way. You know, to be able to go out and be on your own and be peaceful. For mental health and well-being, it was just unbelievable. You'd actually miss it if you didn't actually give yourself the time. It doesn't really matter where you are. You can get your steps in absolutely anywhere. Everyone's always looking forward to it. Um, it creates a great positive buzz and um, great mental health. People have already been getting their teams together in work. If you're thinking about it, do get involved. It's just a bit of fun. Anyone interested in joining? Come on, get your honours. Let's go. Join with me and let's all move together while we're all apart. Okay, we are taking in Sarah O'Brien now. So I just want to see, have we, uh, do we drop any connection to Sarah? Yeah, we've just lost Sarah uh, O'Brien. Sarah, so over to you. Okay, thanks, Sarah. It's, uh, Sarah, this is this is the joys of working in the technology environment. Uh, so uh, I Sarah, Sarah, I think Sarah we're back, back in. Then. Okay, yeah. back to Sarah. Sarah, you're introducing Claude. We just lost you there technically for a few minutes. Yeah, hi. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Um, the beauty of online, as you were saying, Sarah McCormick. So, so um, hope you really enjoyed that uh, short uh, steps video. And uh, the uh, I suppose for me, every time I watch it, it makes me smile because the the energy and, and the enthusiasm of those amazing coordinators and volunteers is, is just palpable. So, um, so yeah, I'm delighted to welcome another amazing person who uh, is involved with Steps to Health, and that's our national coordinator, uh, Cloda Armitage. Welcome, Cloda. Um, uh, can you give us an update on where we are with where we are with Steps to Health this year? Yeah, sure thing, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, it's just great to just like to um, echo Sarah's uh, thoughts there on uh, the wonderful team coordinators that we have each year to participate in the challenge. And it's just great to see their enthusiasm for participating each year. Um, Leo, could you share the, the poster, please, now? Thank you. Okay, so the and um, this is our poster. The Steps to Health Challenge um, it runs over five weeks, and this year we're going to kick it off uh, starting on Monday, the thirty first of May, and it will then finish on Sunday, the fourth of July. Um, registration is still open, so it uh, is open until Sunday, 9th of May, and teams of between two and ten can register from our HSC website. So it's hsc.ie forward slash steps challenge and you click on the link in there and it'll bring you to the registration page and just fill in your details and you'll be set up to start the challenge. 
Um, this, e this year, yeah, our registration will close on Sunday the May 9th, so we still plenty of time, uh, a few more days to get your team together. Um, we're really looking forward to uh, the challenge this year, even though we know the teams participating, many of them will be doing it virtually, but we still aim to have lots of fun this year, as always, uh, with fun competitions and prizes. And also, um, I suppose the big one is the kudos of uh, topping the leaderboard each week. So a reminder to everyone, it's um, open for all health service staff and all employees working in section 38 and 39. So remember, sign up before Sunday. Don't be, don't be, don't lose out. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, uh, Cloda, uh, and to Sarah O'Brien uh, for that um, uh, introduction to and talking to us about uh, physical activity and the importance of activity uh, in relation to our daily uh, lives. Uh, and uh, Cloda, I want to say, keep up the good work of actually getting us all involved in relation to uh, physical activity. Durable, I'm inviting you back in here because you can see we have lots of uh, lots of things going on uh, in the in the HSE and uh, offering them out to the public in relation to activities. But I just want to refer back there to the poll question uh, that we had earlier. And we actually were interested in seeing there, you know, is it a challenge for people to get uh, and be active for that 30 minutes of physical activity in their uh, in their days? So uh, to the backroom team there and uh, Leo, uh, perhaps we can actually show the results of the poll. So Derva, let's have a look at this here and we can actually see, yes, it's not surprising that the majority there are saying that yes, it is a challenge uh, to achieve uh, the 30 minutes of physical activity uh, during our working day. And I think if the result was anything different, we probably would uh, would be uh, be surprised. So Leah, can I just check that I have Derville and myself back on uh, back on a screen uh, here uh, in in relation yes. to where we are. Yes, Sarah. Okay. okay, that's fine. So uh, Derville. Um, I, one thing that strikes me here is looking at the poll, it's not surprising uh, about the challenge that's in it, but I suppose motivation. And uh, you are a great person uh, of getting motivated and we can see them all there in the fittest family when you go out there and uh, um, it's not, I'm sure they're not all at the same level in relation to the level of, uh, of fitness, but um, what tips or what can you give us about, you know, being motivated? We start off and then we drop off. So, you know, a bit of motivation come up from yourself, Derville. Yeah, well, firstly, Sarah, I can promise you do not need to be fit as family level motivated and want to go through a bog with your family to stay fit and well and to exercise most days. Um, so for me personally, like people assume that I'm motivated all the time and I'm absolutely not because I've so much other stuff going on. So what I do, um, and I was talking about this the other day, somebody, I have this five minute rule with myself. So if even if I feel like doing nothing, I go, OK, you have to move for five minutes. And if after five minutes you still feel absolutely rubbish, then you can stop. But you have to give it five minutes. And I've had that rule for about the past five years. And it's honestly, I think there's only been about three times that after the five minutes I've wanted to stop. So that's my first one. I go, okay, give it, give it five minutes and then you can walk away if you want to walk away. Um, so I think that's a good, the five minute rule is a good consideration. Then I think um, being accountable, having a group, you could see it there from the video, like this with the steps challenge. Like if you have, like other people that are doing something similar to what you're doing like one of my really good friends struggles with motivation and I do live workouts every Monday night with my online community and I text her on Mondays and I said don't forget I'll be live at eight o'clock and then she feels she has to do it because I text her and she always texts me afterwards saying oh, I'm delighted I did it um so try and have those people that you're accountable to and those little groups that you can set up and you can be in because I think there's more people similar than dissimilar when it comes to motivation. Um, so I think that is a good one. And the final thing, and we've probably touched on it already, is like, yes, you need to kind of push yourself to move, but also enjoy it, you know, take that time. You know, you can hear that lady speaking in the video, but like the piece of going out for a walk on your own, a 30 minute walk. And like I, I do, and I've, so I've done Pilates for probably 13 years from being a professional athlete doing it to just doing it to move, to doing it through pregnancy, to doing a post-pregnancy, to doing it now. And like, it, I just 
feel wonderful after, but I rarely feel like starting it. So, you know, do do you kind of push yourself for those first five minutes? Um, and also the way life has changed in the past year, where are your opportunities now? Like, where can you like pull your snippets of time? How does your life look day to day in a way that it might not have looked? I think some of us have more opportunities to do more stuff. Um, which is great. There's more stuff available at home. You know, obviously your on-demand videos are, are a really great example of that. So yeah, I think you don't expect to be Mrs. Motivator every day and feel like it. Don't put yourself under that pressure. Another one that works for me sometimes actually as well is setting like a goal, like having time periods. So like I was saying at the moment, I'm doing a five week challenge. So I know at the end of the five weeks, I'll take a week where I won't do anything very structured. And then I'll go back in and I'll have another time slot. Um, so I think kind of sitting down with yourself, checking in with yourself, like how often do we check in with everybody else all the time? How often do you check in with yourself? Sit down, pen, piece of paper. How am I feeling? Exercise. How am I feeling in my mental well-being? How, am I feeling connected to people? Um, how am I nourishing myself? And just write them down and give yourself that little bit of time to think about it and then start to plan out from there. You know, the tools that, you know, you're providing here with these videos are amazing, but you have to also, as I said at the start, like take responsibility and find it within yourself to kind of take control of your well-being because there's only benefits really to doing that. I, I love that piece there, Dermot, that really fits into me is that you don't have to be perfect every day and you don't have to do everything every uh, every day. So that's uh, that certainly uh, gels into my into my life. Uh, and Derval, I know when you prefer there to, uh, to yoga there as well. So, you know, we'll actually just share with you and with our audience here today just a little promo video for our yoga that will be uh, coming your way as part of the suite of the exercises. So let's have a play there of our promo video for the uh, yoga. Hi, my name is Kira, and the HSE Health and Wellbeing and I have created a series of eight beginners yoga classes. These classes are designed for beginners, and so everybody can try and move and connect and breathe with me. I have been teaching yoga for the last 15 years and practicing for the last 30. Yoga is an amazing stress regulation tool, and this yoga series that I've created will support you in relaxation, breath, movements, and rest. So come discover the benefits of creating a regular self-care practice in your week. Looking forward to seeing you there. Bye. Uh, thank you very much. So as I was saying, we are starting uh, with the uh, Pilates out from here today. So uh, Pilates for Beginners will have eight of that 30 minute session uh, videos that are in place. And then we will be following on with uh, yoga and we'll also be joining up with strength and conditioning and uh, some yoga chair exercises. So no shortage uh, of activity and certainly in relation to the Steps to Health Challenge as well. Uh, Derby, we're going to look at some of the questions here that's in the audience and I'm inviting back in Sarah O'Brien and I know you're having problems and I do apologize for the technical challenge that we have uh, here from there. But Sarah, if you're still online, we're delighted. You are great that you come back in and we'll have a look at uh, some of the, the, the questions. So we'll take and we'll, we'll see what our, our audience asking us uh, to uh, actually have a look at here uh, that's in uh, into this. Um, what shall I see? Uh, what, um, what value does Derville uh, put on a lone exercise a time for a couple as well as exercise a time as a family? Oh, that's, that's a really interesting question. Um, I do a bit of both. Um, I do carve out good pockets of time to exercise on my own. Um, I just find I need that. Um, and then family-wise, I always consider that almost bonus exercise time. Um, I have a very busy two-year-old, so um, Someone said to me the other day, I was up at the back at GA training, they said I'm definitely exercising because I spent the entire time chasing him. Um, but I think there's no one right or wrong answer for anybody. And I think you have to figure out for yourself, like what works for you and what's sustainable. And then where are your limits with time and where, as I said, where are your pressure points? So for me, I, I do probably, I'd say three or four, pockets on my own a week of time um 
four in a good week and then the rest of it like I, you know I'll do things with the kids like I'll I was funny the bike to work scheme because I've availed of that I have a bike and I will I have a seat in the back of my shield so I'll put him in that and my daughter will cycle um or my husband will cycle with our two-year-old and I'll run I'll jog um a little bit jog stop start nothing too fast so I'm always trying to trying to just figure out that balance and and go what but, but but again it's back to that like checking in on myself and like what do I actually need here what makes me feel a bit fulfilled and also I'm always asking myself like about like I feel like we spend a lot of the day particularly you know when you're working a stressful job um your energy can be getting depleted and you can get tired but what gives you energy like what kind of fills your cup back up so for me that is I do need a bit of alone time to exercise yeah and uh, durable thanks for that there's another one coming in here which is interesting is how would you motivate a, an 18 year old daughter um who has a sedentary lifestyle and try and get them involved in doing more exercise god that's so interesting um i feel for you because i can't imagine that's easy i think the grouping of people that it must be so hard for in the past 12 months i think teenagers in particular um i think now the world has reopened a little bit obviously not totally and within, within the confines of what's safe I think trying to get her with the people she likes to spend time with, trying to get them to do activity together also um I think we can sometimes look be quite narrow-minded about activity so um she might not want to play ga but then she might want to go on a hike with her friends and it's trying to facilitate that and looking at the different ways um, I think coming at it with a broad approach and um, just I like my daughter's only five and a half going on six and I see with her she wants to do activity if she's with her pals um, so I think it's about setting up the environment to make her want to be there um, yeah it's that's not an easy one I wish I had a way better answer for you than that suppose that's that's probably the challenge for uh, for many many um households is how do we get maybe uh, younger people involved and sometimes it's it can actually be the direct opposite that there's just so much uh, interactivity and uh, there's another one here and actually saying is you know the older you get do you actually need to have less uh, activity in your in your life so maybe something there durable about actually exercise and um and age yeah, I think that's I think that's interesting. And actually, um, one of the coaches that works works at me and Derval.e, we did a whole thing recently around um exercising kind of as you are starting to get older. And I love that you're going to introduce strength training because I think strength training is something that we all underestimate. I think it's really important to be strong. So I think as you get older, it is what works and what suits your life. So when I consider strength training and the benefits I consider of that, I don't think about me. Now, I do love to weight lift, but I think about me being able to carry bags of the shopping. I think about me being able to get up and out of chairs, in and out of the car, having mobility. If I fall over, can I stop myself quickly? You know, that that type of thing. So um, I think as we're getting older, you just have to probably be conscious of load. I'm sure there's people on here who have far better answers than I do on it. But um, I think the likes of introducing yoga, I think that's low impact, um, particularly if people have like aches and pains. Um, I think not saying I'm getting older, so activity is not for me saying, okay, well, what activity can I do? Um, I love swimming as a low impact activity, I have to say. I know pools haven't been open, but hopefully they will start to reopen. And I do love love yoga and I love Pilates as well. So I think it's about it's about just being mindful. And I, I would all say go ask experts. If you're is there something in particular that you're worried about, always go and ask your GP um, and get some of that. And I'd say, Sarah, I suppose there's just a query in here, just asking when I was focusing earlier, I focus on the age, adult age group 18 to 64. Um, but in terms of the, the World Health Organization, they, they've broken down their recommendations across all age groups. And, and for older adults, um, the general recommendation is to the, the same, where, where they can, the same level of, of moderate to vigorous um, activity as, as for uh, the 18 to 64 and, and building in that strength conditioning and strength um, building exercise and flexibility building exercise that, that Derville re referred to there um, because I suppose the um, the the what, what I've I found very interesting um, a number of years ago speaking to 
uh, some researchers in the Brain Health Institute in Trinity that uh, the more active you are at 40, the better you will, your, your well-being will be when you're 65, 70. Um, so so that's, the, that's the time to get active, uh, to, to make sure to, to really work on, on building your pension, as, as Derville was saying early, earlier, in terms of building your, your muscle strength, um, your flexibility and that. So, so as, as, as we age, we're, we're in a, in a better, um, better space. That's, uh, that's good. And uh, one of the things there as well, uh, Gerval, uh, and you know, you mentioned earlier that you're coming up to your 40th birthday. So you, you're certainly a, in a very good place as Sarah O'Brien is there for growing old and, and having that, that good mindset. But I know, and uh, I've seen it referenced there in the questions as well, journals and keeping journals is something that is really, uh, it really part of you. And I know there that you uh, published your Healthy Lifestyle uh, Journal and you did the pause, I think the Mindfulness uh, Journal. What's this link between journal and achieving and you? Maybe just see if there's something in that for us to learn. Yeah, it's interesting. I am... Um... I first started keeping a journal when I was very young. I've kind of an, uh, a, probably a wellness journal, but I wouldn't have known that's what I was doing at the time. I had a brilliant coach um, who said to me, you need to start writing it down. You need to start writing down the exercise you're doing, how you feel, you know, what your goals are, what you're trying to achieve um, and be quite in the present with it, but yet planning for the future and what you're trying to do. So I started doing that really young and um, it stayed with me throughout my professional life and then I retired from professional athletics and I probably didn't do it for a little while and then I started missing that even though I'm a very like techie person I you know I have an online business e-commerce then as well and I but I still love that element of writing so I just made a decision last year that I was going to um, do my own healthy lifestyle journal and I just, it was something I wanted to do for ages. So I did my cookbooks first and then I really wanted to do the journal. So I, because it makes me accountable to myself and because I have such a big community who are very engaged and, you know, who love, love to move and they love tools to feel well. Um, so yeah, we, we designed it, did it, printed it. Um, and we went into a reprint actually recently for more of them. And then as a step on from that, I have a great lady who works on, who works as one of the coaches on my site, um, Dr. Michelle O'Driscoll. She's a pharmacist, she's a PhD in stress management, and she does mindfulness with people on our site. And it's so popular. The mindfulness was so popular. I dipped in and out of it. Um, I find it really beneficial, um, particularly in recent months. And yeah, so we did, um, it's just there actually, the pause. So we did the pause at Michelle and um, yeah, it's just gorgeous. It's just, you know, in your day to day, I think being present, one of the, I had a cup of tea with her and, um, and then there's the first version of the healthy lifestyle journal. I had a cup of tea with Michelle when I first met her. And one of the things she talked to me about, and I don't know, this, this might resonate with someone else. I'm not sure, but it really landed with me was when I was putting the kids to bed about being in that moment of putting the kids to bed, not thinking, I need to um, clean up after dinner. I need to load the dishwasher. I want to go and do 30 minutes exercise. What about my work emails? I need to put the wash on. I need to get back to my WhatsApps. Um, and that that was my introduction to mindfulness. And then I guess, you know, with the journal, you know, I write down, I write down more stuff now, but yeah, I do. I really enjoy it. Um, enjoy writing and planning. And I was saying back into that checking in with yourself, it helps me to take some time to check in. So Derbal, thank you very much. Uh, you certainly have given us um, a lot of your time today and great tips from yourself. And the, the key things there about your saying there, you know, check in with yourself. We are constantly checking in with others, but not forget ourselves, check in with, yourself, with ourselves. Try it, even if you think you don't like it. So for the audience out there, the yoga, the Pilates, the strength uh, and conditioning and the, the yoga chair exercises that will be coming your way, try them, uh, give them a piece and then that you can uh, build up uh, on it uh, day by day uh, with it. And as I'm saying, the Pilates is going to be available as and from uh, today in our suite of online exercises. So as we are coming to a close now to the launch of our online uh, physical uh, activity and the keeping well, the keeping active for being minding your well-being. Uh, I thank all of the people that are involved in making today. First of all, Derval, to you for giving so generously of your time and being part of our launch here today. Uh, we really appreciate it. I thank my colleagues uh, there for joining me, Sarah O'Brien and Claude Armitage for coming and being part of today. 
but I want to thank the people that actually have made it happen in relation to creating the online uh, exercises. You know, this is a dream, I suppose, and maybe those of you that maybe know me for some time know that uh, I've been talking about this for some time in relation to having these online, uh, but it took great work from that team out there. You know who was involved in that, and I really thank you uh, for making uh, that happen. And all of the backroom team uh, here today, uh, which uh, includes uh, a great colleague of mine there and on our team, Fergal Fox. Fergal, always in the background, but Fergal put a huge amount of effort in relation to getting the videos uh, uh, created and working there with our team. So Fergal, thank you and for your support there. And uh, to Noreen Turley and Yvonne Gilson for your support in our backroom uh, here today. And of course, to our technical uh, experts uh, that uh, are supporting us uh, there through Leo and Talina from IMS. Uh, so with that, I can sign off. And just reminding you, that of all the resources that we have created here to HSC Health and Wellbeing, and that is the Minding Your Wellbeing suite of videos, the stress control programs that we actually run. There is available online there tips for uh, when working from home and staying connected in these challenging times uh, during COVID. And of course, now we're adding to that great selection there with the suite of the online uh, exercise programs and starting right now with uh, the Pilates don't even give up at this stage. Do give it a try and get in and keep going. And of course, as Claude and Sarah's called out, don't forget the Steps to Health Challenge. It's still open, registration up until uh, Sunday, and then we can all step it out. So with that, thank you very much. And thanks to the many of you who have joined us for this launch here this afternoon. Cheerio.